What's going on YouTube? Today we'll be going over valve lash. I got this EJ207 here. Got new cams for it, but also new heads. So if you have new cams, new heads, uh, new valves, this is a good time to check your valve lash. We'll go over that process. It's not a complex process, just some feeler gauges and some simple math. So let's get into this quick video. Okay, so first let's go over what tools you need here. First is a torque wrench. This is probably, I mean, this is for every engine build, but this is a quarter inch drive torque wrench. And the reason I have this is because you need to uh, torque these cam caps down, the front ones to seven and the back ones to 14 foot pounds. So a quarter inch drive is gonna suit you best for those specific torque specs. I just have like kind of a speed 10 millimeter here to kind of take the, bolt, uh, the bolts on and off quickly. I have a magnet stick and that's just to take the bucket out. It's gonna be lubed up, it's gonna be kind of slippery and we don't wanna just kind of pry at it. So definitely wanna use a magnet there. And then, of course, assembly lube. You can pick your own variety. I use both of these, uh, Lucas and Redline. And then the feeler gauge. I have three out here. Um, and the reason I have three is because I wanted to show an example of all three and which ones that I prefer to use. So this is the first one, probably the most common, just a straight edge uh, feeler. You can see they're, they're straight. Um, these, there's a, while there is a lot of different feelers in here, uh, we need one that actually bends because if we're trying to stick it in between the cam lobe and the bucket, we're going to try to bend it and in bending it, we won't get a proper measurement. So I rarely, rarely use these for valve lash. The second I have here is the bent feeler gauges, which you want these to have like a 45 or a yeah, 60 degree angle. Um, and you, these are great. These are exactly what we need. The problem with this is they only go up to 0 0.02 inches um, in measurement. and um, you may have a, a larger gap than that, and it's very difficult. You can stack a few and add them, but it's not going to be as accurate as this, which is, I'll post a link to this on Amazon. Bent ones like we want, uh, even on one side, odd on the other, and this goes up to 0 .30, so or 0 .030 inches, which is perfect for what we need. Um, so I'll be using these today. The other thing I wanted to bring up while, I, while I'm here and you can kind of see them in the background is the cam caps. Uh, people always say, don't mix these up or, you know, don't. I just wanted to touch, you, don't, you never have to worry about mixing them up or anything like that, um, especially for left or right. They're labeled appropriately, like this one obviously says LE on it, so that would be left side exhaust. It's the front of it. You can't, you can't put this on the wrong place. Furthermore, all of these should have the, uh, the, Cylinder that they there for the the either two or four one or three and then exhaust so we know it's the exhaust side and then for the the last three digits are actually the designator for the head on every head there are numbers so the designated number for that head the left side is a seven three nine and let's see what the right side is the right side is an eight four two so you can't really screw that up. I mean, obviously, if you want to keep the cams organized and cam caps organized in one spot, you can, but you can't really mess those up. So I just kind of throw them off to the side, unless you had a bucket of, I guess, like, you were doing five heads at once, maybe, but you don't really have to worry about it for this if you're only doing one set of heads. Last thing would be, besides obviously the heads and valves and everything installed, would be a bucket. I use a brand new 438 bucket. Should be able to see that in there. Let's see if it focuses. Um, from Subaru. So this is the smallest bucket you can possibly get. It's a brand new. Um, and the reason I do that is because I'd rather get too small of a bucket, have a big gap that I can measure, and then I can compensate when I buy new buckets, right? So this is a brand new bucket. You could use an old bucket. And I've seen people do this. You could use an old bucket, right? Um, you, but the problem is you don't know that number that's inside is probably inaccurate. So you're gonna have to use a caliper to measure what it is, right? Um, use a caliper, measure what it is, and then after you get that number, then you can like kind of in your head know that that number's wrong and know the number that you've written down is correct and then use that and pass it over uh, to each individual uh, uh, bucket size. So you can do that if you want to cheap out. It's just quicker to do it this way. In my opinion, it's only 20 bucks. You just have to wait a little bit of time, but I've had this for a while. So we're going to use this 438 today. Okay, first step again, we're finishing lubing everything up. Move everything up nice and good. Then we're going to take this the 438 bucket. 438 bucket. Lube that up really good. And where we're checking latch, which we'll start on the far right side here. We'll just lube this up real good and then we'll place it in. 
sure it's nice and clean and lubricated in here. Slide right in. Next step, just lubed up the cam. We want to put the cam in. This is the left intake cam, so we're on the left side. If you're not sure which side is left or right, you can literally look at the head. There's a designator on the head that says L or R. Okay, so we're in there, make sure it spins freely. Again, lubricated very well. And then we want to go ahead and put the caps on. So again, caps can't really screw up. We know that this is left side intake, arrow points forward. This can only go in one spot. Like the ones with the AVCS on them, especially you can't screw up because they literally won't go in any other way on any other part of the head or any other head. So we know that this is right again, 739 and 739 right here, match those up. Then same thing here. We lube these caps up by the way, lube them up very well. This is the fourth cylinder intake again, 739. Make sure that number matches up. And then I'll just go ahead and spin these in with my screwdriver here. Now we're going to torque it all down to spec. I'm set right now to 14, so I'm going to torque these to 14. One, two, three, four, and then these two are set to seven. Okay, now we have everything torqued to spec. We want to make sure the cam spins freely. So we're going to check it here, make sure it's spinning how it should. It's not too tight. Should be able to spin it pretty easily by hand. And that it doesn't hit the casing. So some of these uh, aftermarket cams, sometimes you need to trim up the actual casing. It could actually hit. So you want to go through and make sure this lobe, when you spin it around, is not hitting the casing here, hitting the casing up here hitting the casing down there. Just make sure, especially with an aftermarket cam, obviously you don't have to worry about this with stock cams, but that's something to look out for. Also, I didn't say it, but make sure you're doing checking valve lash with the head fully torqued down to the block. If you do this while it's on the bench, you could find different lash numbers or things that don't fit once you bolt it down to the head. So you definitely wanna bolt it down to the head. Do not do this on a bench and then bolt the head down. So bolt it down first. Okay, before we go crazy with subtraction and all the kind of formulas, crazy formulas we're gonna to have to use, which really aren't that crazy, let's just go ahead and measure the lash that we have here currently, right? So I have my crazy feeler gauge here. I kind of felt this one out, so I kind of know what to look for here. This is a 0 0.023 inch feeler gauge. You want to make sure the lobe is pointed directly up. And we're going to try to go in there. You can see it fits pretty good, pretty snug. I'm not really moving anything. Okay, let's try the 0 0.024. Let's go to the even side just to see how that feels. This is a feeler gauge, so barely catches. All right, so let's work on the math now. You got, you use the feeler gauge. How do we know what buckets we need and how to set our current lash? Let's go do that. Okay, so now comes the complex math. You can see what I kind of drew up here. This is what I draw for uh, every time I do valve lash. Simple piece of paper with just left, uh, the side that I'm doing, intake and then exhaust, and then four kind of boxes beneath that. Then you're gonna see some numbers on here. First is the bucket that I put up top. That's the bucket that I used for all of this. Uh, which is the 438 bucket, um, and that's going to stay the same. And then on the intake side, I write the valve lash that we want, that we're trying to achieve, which is 0 0.203, and for the exhaust, 0 0.254. Now, uh, how did I get these numbers, the 203 and 254? That you're going to have to look up the spec for either your CAM or uh, stock STI specs, stock WRX specs, or whatever you're trying to accomplish. I am basing that off my camshaft card here, which I got from uh, JSC, and these valve clearances that it shows over here in this column, those numbers are actually the same as stock. So this valve clearance is exactly the same. This is a mild S1 cam. This isn't anything crazy. So I just took that. You can see that the, the range here in millimeters, not in inches, in millimeters, I just split that in half for both the intake and exhaust, and I'm, I'm trying to hit right in the middle for both uh, uh, intake and exhaust and the valve clearances. So the first thing I would do is for the intake side, right? We know we're using a 438 bucket, really simple math here, right? So just 4.38, and then we want to actually subtract the lash that we're trying to achieve. So just 0 0.203, right? That works out to 4.177. 
And now I have this number right here. I can write this in every column because this isn't going to change, right? The last that we're trying to achieve or the bucket that we're starting with is not changing for any of these. What is going to change is the last that we did find. So what I would do is I would just add that and then whatever number that is, that's what bucket I need. It's that simple. The last that we got worked out to be, if we look at our feeler gauge, the 0 0.024, but we that's inches, we want millimeters. So all we're gonna do is put that 0 0.610 in this column. So literally 0 0.610, add that up and we get 4.787. Basically this to me would be a 4.7. Seven, nine. And that is the bucket that we're looking for. So now that you've done this math to start off with and you put that in every column, you literally just put the, the lash that you like found for each individual uh, bucket area and that's the number that you're gonna come up with right there. So the first bucket I have that I need is a 479 bucket. It's really that simple. I'm gonna go through all of them here but I don't think I need to elaborate too much on that. It's very simple math. Once you have this initial number, you're just adding and then you're done. Okay, so now you have these bucket sizes. For example, again, we got a 479 here. Where would you go to buy these buckets? I use a couple places. Uh, first would be Flatirons Tuning. I think a lot of people go to Flatirons Tuning for the Subaru buckets. They have a direct line to the dealership, just a drop down that you would just search Subaru valve buckets on their website, pull up the, uh, the, the page, and basically there's a drop down list of every bucket that Subaru sells. There are other options, IAG and uh, Outfront Motorsports also sell buckets. And more importantly, they sell the Calford DLC buckets. And the DLC buckets, from what I gather, DLC stands for diamond-like coating. It's adding a coating to these valve buckets to kind of give you that added wear protection. And because these things do wear out, these buckets pretty quick, they're, they're a wear item, obviously. That's why we're checking lash and we're not reusing old ones. It may behoove you to go ahead and get those buckets because they're only five bucks more than your typical Subaru bu bucket that you're gonna get from Flatiron Tuning or those other retailers as well. So $25 per bucket for the OEM buckets or $30 per bucket for the Calford DLC ones. I'm personally probably gonna go with the Calford. I haven't used those, but I've heard great things about them. So there's no reason not to spend the extra 80 bucks that I would be spending uh, for 16 buckets here. So that is it for Valve Lash. Thanks for watching. If you could, please like and subscribe.